do want to make one issue very clear that that term Yahoo was not me. I get credited with those things once in a while, but it was not me. <laughs> so we have experienced uh, an incredible four days uh, beginning Friday morning. Um, actually before the planning stages, we knew this was going to be a significant event. Uh, we began holding meetings with the department head, relative department heads. We're going to have to uh, deal with the circumstances and they were being predicted to be uh, fairly major in this area. Uh, we also were able to coordinate some efforts with our state partners at uh, New Hampshire Homeland Security and Emergency, Emergency Management, uh, DOT and the state parks to be prepared so we would coordinate our efforts uh, to the best interest of safety of the folks living down there at the beach and those that would wander down there. Despite all the warnings that we give not to come down during these operations, we know there is that select few that do not heed those warnings and exercise incredibly poor judgment. Uh, to include bringing small children up along the seawall as waves are crashing over and rocks are coming over the side. It's um, just not sure why these weather events. I, I, I understand the, the curiosity. It is an incredible thing to behold, but you can do it from a safe distance and people are walking right up on the wall when, with small kids. It was just it's difficult to watch people take those type of risks. So again, we would uh, right to reinforce, we do have another storm coming. We actually have a uh, flood watch tonight uh, into tomorrow. Uh, these tides are going to continue, I believe, right through uh, to the next storm cycle. So we went around today looking, doing assessments, and as we were talking, some of the waves were starting to get high and splash over and right onto the, the group of people we were down with there making the assessment with the press. Uh, so it has been an impressive example of what mother nature can do and we have to recognize that force and that power and that we have to take the proper precautions as part of that coordinated effort uh, we were able to secure some vehicles uh, that were of a better design to deal with those type of environmental conditions uh, decommissioned military vehicles and I want to thank the towns of Newton New Hampshire and Kingston New Hampshire for stepping forward and allowing us to use their equipment it was uh, really saved, particularly on the fire department uh, apparatus. We weren't driving those large engines that cost a lot of, a lot of money and can be adversely affected by the salt water to allow us to use those vehicles that are designed to work in those harsh environments. We continue with our plans to try to procure some of those vehicles for the town of Hampton so we have those in stock in the future so we're able to handle those on our own. Um, again, obviously when these things get this big, if we have to draw upon our, our partners, we will. The event on Friday, <coughs> was probably the largest volume of water I've ever experienced coming over the seawall uh, in my time in this community since 1979. Uh, but it had a, a different effect because of the wind direction and the surge and the things that we were experiencing that normally High Street is an area that we just, we know is going to flood over. High Street stayed fairly dry uh, because of that northeast wind. It actually pushed the water over towards Winnicunit Road and we also experienced extensive flooding along the Route 1 corridor right there at the Hampton Falls line. Uh, one of the cars that got uh, stuck in the water was actually in that area where uh, fire and police went in to recover a woman and her young child that were stuck in the vehicle. Um, and we subsequently got the road shut down in, in uh, coordination with Hampton Falls. A lot of these roads stayed closed for upwards of three hours. Again, the reason being usually the water recedes quickly after that high tide mark uh, but with the conditions we had with the surge and the wind, it was trapping water in places and keeping it there that we hadn't experienced in the past to that degree. You turn around the next couple of tides, the wind direction had changed. So the type of water and where you were seeing the water changed. So that, that called on a lot of coordination and adaptability, particularly by police, fire, and public works to try to deal with those issues and trying to get the cooperation from the public, uh, which, which was a daunting task. Um, moving forward to Sunday, uh, I couldn't believe when I got up Sunday to come come in, uh, we had a road race coming in town that I thought we were going to have to cancel it. The incredible work that had been done by Public Works and uh, New Hampshire DOT to clear the roadways um, allowed that event to take place safely with no injuries, no issues. But shortly at the conclusion of the race, or just as it was concluding, the water started to break over the wall again and we did have to shut down Route 1A again in certain sections. Timing was everything. Uh, a few of the, the, the slower folks, I hate to call them that, but they got the, uh, the salt water shower, but they were actually, as they went by my position, laughing and were enjoying the fact that there was a unique experience. Uh, but as the 
afternoon progressed, the uh, heavier stuff started coming and the rocks came over again. So we again had to clear the roadways. Um, I believe DOT had to perform that mission on 1A at least five times over this weekend and into today. We had some more uh, stuff debris coming over the wall uh, earlier this morning. I expect it again this evening. So moving forward, uh, we do expect a significant weather event coming up uh, Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, with the storm, and this is from the uh, National Weather Service, we, we get this through our partners in Homeland Security. We are looking at a potential of 8 to 12 inches of snow uh, in the Hampton area. They're, they're describing it as that heavy wet snow. So that's going to be a little bit more work for us to push and get it out of the way. Uh, and again, with those high tides, uh, part of that storm is still uh, the residual surge that we get from those storms can last up to a week. And I believe we're going to experience some of that uh, probably right into Thursday and Friday. So again, the conditions are calmer right now. But again, I would, I would caution members of the public that want to come down and see this, that at the peak of the storms when we're trying to clear roads and, and, and try to get the folks that are really in need of us, tying up police and fire because you drove your car into a large puddle right. is, to, is aggravating, I have to be honest with you, because we, we just try and try to get that message out. Uh, we may have to resort to shutting down roads further out. Uh, we did that on Sunday. We wound up shutting down uh, Route 101 at Glade Path and turning all the cars around until we could get the area cleared out and let the water recede. We're going to have to resort to more of those type of uh, areas where we stop the traffic from getting down in and limit it to people that can, a bona fide residents trying to get in and check on their property. So, and if there's any questions from the board, I'd be happy to entertain them. When is yeah. the, oh, sorry. What is this weather supposed to start Wednesday? Wednesday around 1 o'clock is what they're predicting, but that, that could change where we're still in a little distance out. That forecast will tighten up probably by tomorrow afternoon. I'll put more information out to the board as we get closer. Okay, so as far people will probably be smart if they're down there and they want to move their cars to do it on Wednesday. I would, I would highly recommend, I know we're going to have this discussion tomorrow at staff meeting, but uh, make arrangements so that the folks that are in those low-lying areas, again, can move their cars up into the municipal lots that are high and dry. Okay, thank you. Rusty? Yeah, uh, Fred, I had somebody call me the other day and ask, you know, they're all, we we're asking all these people to move their cars up off the beach. Is there any way that we could use the town bus to make a couple of scheduled trips so that if people want to get back to the beach? Depends on the time. Okay. Obviously, you have to have a driver. Um, we can work on that tomorrow with staffing. Well, it, it was a good idea. When the lady called me, I thought yeah. it was a great idea to, to have, you know, if, if we could schedule like uh, four or five o'clock in the afternoon after people get out of work, if they want to park, we're going to make one trip down there. So anybody that wants to park their yeah. car up, you know, if we can get the word out. I think it's a great, it was a great Well, idea. let me coordinate with the rec director and we'll see as long as the board's okay with that. We'll see if we can try to make that happen. I just think it helps our citizens out a little bit. So it was, it was a good, good uh, recommendation. Other than that, Chief, you did a fine job and we appreciate all you've done. Thank you. Rick. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, was able to watch exact. you know, you, I, it was vis very, I had to, I couldn't just go outside because I did have those sandbags. But your out. front yard was underwater. I checked several times. Yeah, but I didn't get any water. It was so good. And I saw people, I saw you going by numerous times. Mm -hmm. But, and I noticed that there were times where they put the sign high water and tried to keep people from going through and then must have had to get, go somewhere else and the people would just start coming through again. I just was uh, curious of why wouldn't they stop the traffic like at the beginning of Boar's Head so that people could turn there and go back? We alter it depending on where the flooding is and what we have for staffing. Now on Saturday uh, we had uh, staffed up very well and we also got some support from the New Hampshire State Police over the weekend. So we had five troopers helping us manage um, some of those areas where it's a, so it was it really comes down to staffing and where the flood see, is coming in. I could see how it was different yeah. every time. Every tide changed. And, you know, like for me, it was amazing that there weren't very many people out Saturday night after watching the unbelievable amount of people that were out Friday night. Um, but, you know, that is pretty low there. And because uh, the reason why there were so many cars going around is because I, th I think it was the same cars going around and around and around. Yeah, I think you're right. They, they went by, <laughs> turned around at Little Jack's, went for another spin and came back again. I don't know if they were kids. There were a lot of them were in trucks, big trucks. 
And uh, I thought it was impressive also with the uh, trucks that you must be referring to that came from the other communities. It almost looked like they were service trucks. Yep, they're, they're uh, decommissioned military vehicles. There's yeah. a program where law enforcement can access those, uh, and we are actively pursuing a number of those vehicles for the town of Hampton. I hope that that's something that we do. I would certainly be supportive of that. So I would just ask that when it's going to be that type of a high tide, that maybe they would just block that area off for a couple hours. Uh, I also saw that <coughs> you know, some of the people were coming down out of Boar's Head, and if they're leaving their house, it's one thing. And I did have a few people I called that were upset because they couldn't get back to their houses. Uh, although one of them would have been down there at Glade Path, and it must have been the state police were there. Yes. Yeah. They, uh, they were, you know, they said the people were very nice to them. Then there were some other people down on Winnicott Road. They weren't quite so happy. But I, I think that the people should understand that if they're going to be out and the water's like that and the way all those rocks are in the road. Well, the water, when you look at how a storm starts to develop, especially along the seacoast, and a lot of us have been here for a lot of years, and we're used to how that happens, uh, the governor came down Saturday morning. And so we gave him a tour. He came down earlier and uh, took him around to some of the areas that had been adversely affected and advised them that when we were by the uh, town seawall in Bicentennial Park, he said, this area will be underwater within an hour. And most people find that hard to believe that the water splashing within an hour is going to be up over in the oceans right there. And trying to explain that to people so when they leave particular areas like Boar's Head or King's Highway, they've left and now they want to come back and can't get back because the intersections are underwater. Mm -hmm. And some of them do get very upset with the police and, and argumentative and it's, it's just, if I could turn the water off, I would. <laughs> but a, a lot of people don't understand. They think when the high tide comes from the ocean, it's a full hour later when it starts coming in from the marsh, pretty much. It takes, a, it, there is a time delay from yeah. the water being pushed into those, est those estuary areas, developing to that level and then it starts coming in from the back. So. It was a great photo. I don't know who put it on, uh, on a Facebook account. Of somebody got a photo when the weather had cleared of what Hampton Beach looked like uh, as those surges were taking place. And it just looked, one A looked like a little strip from, from Boar's Head to the bridge. Mm -hmm. uh, it was amazing the amount of water that surrounds that area of land. And we drive through and we don't see that. Mm -hmm. But it's there. And when those levels rise, and your property right there is an example of it, as I was driving by, I had a uh, Homeland Security rep uh, with me all day Friday so they could get a first-hand view of what happens down here. And I said, we're going to come back here in about 45 minutes. And see those sandbags there? The water will be up to the sandbags, and his entire driveway will part be part of Lake Hampton. Mm -hmm. And we came back about 45 minutes later, and exactly the water level was where we thought it was going to be. Uh, it's an amazing thing how quickly the water rises. It goes out fast, too, ordinarily, but the, ordinarily. Wind, the wind sort of changes that. It was interesting, too, to um, see, you know, part of the problem was, like, at, at certain times, people started driving on the medium there with one tire, and then... I was doing that. Yeah, I, I noticed <laughs> the police were doing it, and I, I think that was a good idea. But then other times, kids in trucks would come by, and they would pass people on the right, and really, that's where the problem is, is that type of behavior from kids. You know, it just it makes everything a lot more miserable. So I think you did a great job. And the interesting thing will be, it will all be different on Wednesday when it's snow. That adds another dimension depending on the snow because it winds up clogging our drains up and causing other issues along with flooding. So we saw that the storm, uh, the last prior storm. Do you think that if there would have been a lot of snow and ice, like in the marsh and, uh, you know, everywhere, that when these tides came, it would have been a lot worse? Oh, absolutely. The, yeah. the, the prior storm, we saw that on Ashworth Ave. There were many icebergs yeah. out in the middle of the roadway that floated up from the back streets, and those cause more work for us. You know, it would be great if the water just came in and receded, but <clears> it <throat> weaves debris that you still can't drive down the road, and those big chunks of ice... Are, are bad obstacles. You can't move them by hand. You need to have a plow come in or an excavator come in and push those off to the side of the road before we can open the roadway safely. Well, so you did a good job. I was glad I had a good book <laughs> sitting there <laughs> watching it for like three hours. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bean. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief, uh, you and I go back some 30 years to uh, um, the big green machine, and uh, um, I, being older than you, have watched you uh, um, progress in your career. And uh, you are the preeminent law enforcement uh, police chief uh, 
in the state of New Hampshire, in my opinion. You have uh, an unparalleled uh, threat level with Mother Nature, uh, with crowds, uh, and it's not well understood, both in terms of uh, leading your department operationally, um, liaising with the state, and uh, um, confronting threat from Mother Nature. And uh, you're the bull in uh, the uh, leadership uh, as we used to say in the Marine Corps, you're the bull department head, and I know you uh, won't agree with that, uh, but you are the senior uh, department head. Uh, you've progressed through the ranks in New Hampshire, and I'm just so proud of uh, your performance through uh, three decades and more. Uh, you're a Hampton native. Uh, you're in the mercantile uh, business with your family in the hospitality business, and I know you learn things from this storm, uh, and you continue to lead your department and bring others up that will eventually someday replace your billet as you have done uh, with Chief Sullivan. So to your department, to your men, uh, great work. And I know that you've learned things and that you will uh, incorporate those lessons learned uh, in the future events. And thank you. And Mr. Welch, thank you for your great leadership in this as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Great thank job. You. Great report. Fred, we'll see Fingers you in the morning to get ready for the next one. <laughs> Fingers crossed on Wednesday. Thank you.